I love weather. Here's me. I've known I've wanted to be a meteorologist ever since I was very little. And it's special to have your first weather balloon. Here I am with my first weather balloon at the age of about three. Um, and so having always known that, I was encouraged by my father, my family. Here I am uh, with him. He was an environmental science teacher for 37 years. Built my first weather station with him, which you're seeing in this picture here. Um, it was a great chance for him to encourage me to get education to become a meteorologist. So I did. Got a lot of education, lots of degrees. I'm a doctor. But I didn't know what to do with it. You know, do I want to study tornadoes, hurricanes? There's so many possible things. And so it was a real challenge for me to do that. In fact, my professors gave me a hard time because I would apply for everything. Then I discovered Madison. And, you know, this is a big place for meteorology. You probably didn't know this. This big building here that's on the UW campus holds, you know, about 200 meteorologists. And so this is a big area for that. Everyone comes here. We're the founders of a lot of things. And so I did get a job here, and it was great. I was a keyboard jockey. I uh, got the chance to actually work on a computer weather project. That was fun. But I wasn't really sure if this was it. Was this it? And then I finally got the, 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 someone who came to me and said, hey, I'd like you to come work for me. His name was Professor Charles Stearns. And Chuck was a pretty interesting guy. He's like, you know, I want you to work for me and become someone who works in my Antarctic projects. Antarctica? What? I've never even thought about working in that part of the world. And of course, here's the obligatory picture with the penguins. <laughs> it's beautiful there. It really is. It's gorgeous. And, and having had the chance to think about working for him, I couldn't resist. Um, you know, it's beautiful when you look at it from above with a satellite, which is what I do in part of my work, and it really is amazing. So then Chuck challenged me. He says, okay, I want you to take all the world's satellites and I want you to put them together like a jigsaw puzzle and do it over the Antarctic and the Southern Ocean. And so we did. We're the only group in the world that does this. Um, it's used in weather forecasting, research, education, worldwide. After this, he says, okay, now I want you to work on my weather station program. And that's non-trivial because you see this map, all the triangles on this map, which is about half of the dots you see here, are Wisconsin weather stations. That's half of that big piece of space. That's, that's one and a half times the size of the United States. So this is a big bit, you know, to do this. And it's a lot. When you get down there, it's, really, it's a really pretty place. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, when you see and work underneath those clouds and get to see this area. Um, so it was fun to go, get that chance to go off, go to Antarctica. So I'm kind of curious, what was your commute like today? <laughs> what did you have to wear? I, I got to wear 35 to 70 pounds of cold weather gear. And of course, it's fun taking a C-17. Um, this beats the belt line, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. And so we really use every transport mode possible to get to our weather stations. Um, you know, planes and helicopters and, hey, see the buses on this? Their tires are as tall as I am. So these are big things, you know, that we're driving around and getting to our spots. But when we get out there, it's amazing. This one spot here, Windless Bite Weather Station, is a spot where if you stop moving, if you're quiet, it is no sound. The only sound you can hear is your heartbeat. And that's something I've never experienced anywhere else in the world. And hey, you get to meet famous people. Um, so here's uh, me with Prince Albert of Monaco. Yes, that is Sir Edmund Hillary before he passed away. And even a very famous Madisonian, Charles Bentley, who's been going to Antarctica for over seven decades. So it's really neat to get the chance to meet some of these folks. And we did some neat things, like we actually figured out how to find wind measurements using our composites. Um, and that's important because you see the space where there's no blue winds. We fly down there. We work in that area. And it'd be kind of nice to be able to be safe. You know, this is a dangerous place. When we're trudging around out here, it, it is pretty impressive. Um, and so when we're out doing these projects and doing this work, you know, I, I don't do what I do by myself. I, I'd love to, but I really need a team. And I do have one. I'm very fortunate. Um, I have three staff members who are former students of mine. I have three new students and growing. And I still get to work with some of Dr. Stern's uh, former protege. So this team makes it work for us. We're able to get out there and do the exciting job that we do and the, the job that I do. And now I'm in the classroom. I'm teaching at Madison College. So if you like weather and climate, that's what I do in, in the classroom. And I get to now train the next generation of students who are moving on to become doing this. And hey, after the day's over, you know, I still get to launch weather balloons. <laughs> it's kind of fun. And so with that, I thank you very much. <laughs>